morning to you. <clears throat> Good to see you. Good crowd here. Leaving. <laughs> so, as soon as Angie quiets down, we can get started. And <laughs> All right. <clears throat> hmm. I stay in trouble, so it's okay. <laughs> now mom's here to relay everything else. So <laughs> now that Angie's left the room. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we just stay in trouble. Well, good to see you this morning. I hope you've had a good week so far. So far, so good. Looking forward to a good week. Looking forward to Christmas time and all the celebrations and thinking about our Savior that came to be born on earth. Uh, to live among sinful men, to die for those same sinful men, and to die for, for us, for our sins that would come uh, behind. And uh, so glad that we have the Savior that has the perfect plan for salvation. You know, we, we wouldn't have planned it that way, I don't believe, the way that the Lord uh, worked everything out. And so I'm glad that He knows what He's doing. And so we've talked a little bit about that in the life of David, that God knows what he's doing, and he has some things uh, for us. We talked about how that David went to the man of God, uh, seeking the will of God, seeking uh, some answers for his life as he was somewhat on the run from King Saul, and uh, he sought for some peace. He sought for provision, sought for protection. We saw the, these things, and we looked uh, last week. We'll actually finish, if you'd like to turn to Genesis 45, we'll finish up some thoughts and then move on uh, in our uh, lesson today. And uh, we, we think about the, the promises uh, that God has for us in His Word uh, David had the promise on him that he would be the future king of Israel, but as David looked and the things happening in his life, it did not seem like that was going to happen. There's times in our lives when we think about the precious promises of God that we can find strength in those things. There's things that God has promised us and will help us in our, our life. Of course, we don't know what the future holds. David didn't know exactly what the future held for him, but he had the promise to be the, the king, the next king of Israel, and he was anointed as such. Uh, any of the other brothers could have been anointed to be king. Uh, Saul's son, Jonathan, could have been the next king, but David chose, or David, David didn't choose it, I'm sure, uh, God chose David, a man after God's own heart, and so I'm glad that God has his perfect way, and he still does have his perfect way and his perfect will, and we ought to walk in his ways and, and do his will. So uh, let's look, uh, let's, let's pray, and then we'll uh, get into uh, our, our lesson today, starting uh, with continuation in Genesis 45. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for this opportunity to speak your name. We, we sang the, the song, the little tune, uh, His name is wonderful, and surely your name is wonderful to us. I thank you that you are wonderful to us. We thank you that you do have a peace that we can have. You do have provisions that you do give to us. Uh, you do have protection for us, and you do have promises that we can live by and believe you in. Uh, it would be something to have all these promises from you that we could not believe, but we definitely can believe you and believe in your, your word, believe in your promises. So please help us in your word. Please help us with our understanding as you guide us, direct us this morning by your Holy Spirit uh, into these uh, things today, looking at the promises of God and the God of promises. And so we thank you in Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, Genesis uh, 45, and um, I know last week I mentioned that I really didn't have things together. It looks like they're already starting, don't have things together, so uh, we'll try uh, in the next uh, hour and a half. Oh, I don't have that long. Okay, next little bit, try to get it together here. All right, uh, Genesis 45, let's pick up in verse 4 through 
8, we had talked a little bit about uh, Abraham, about the promises of God to uh, bless Abraham, to bless his seed, that he would be uh, a blessed uh, nation, would come from him. And so he had that promise. And I'm sure as his lineage would come falling behind, there were times in their lives when maybe they could not fully trust the promises of God. Uh, I, I don't know that every single one had lived every single day uh, victoriously that, hey, God's going to bless a nation. And he's, he's given me opportunity and doing things through me and in my life. And as they, they come along, uh, of course, we know uh, that the children of, of Jacob, the children of Israel, uh, that he's blessing brothers too. And there's going to be a great nation. And not knowing what God would have uh, and hold for that nation, but uh, we do see uh, even today a truly great nation in the nation of, of Israel. And so there were many uh, precious promises. Let's look at verses uh, 4 through 8 to start with. Genesis 45, we had discussed about uh, uh, Joseph. Uh, look here at uh, verse 4. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years, in the which there shall neither be earing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth, and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. And he hath made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. I love this uh, passage because three times there Joseph says, Hey, it wasn't about you. It wasn't about me. It was about God. And God always had this. There was nothing lacking. There was no trouble there. Of course, we saw some trouble. You saw some trouble. And there's a famine in the land. It looks like maybe even our family would be wiped out through famine and, and truly could be. But God sent me. You think you're the one that just uh, threw me in a pit, brought me out and sold me off to merchants. Uh, never maybe even to give a second thought. I don't know if uh, each day they were felt guilty about it or each day they felt like, hey, we're, we're, we're rid of that dreamer. You know, we won't have to listen to that anymore. We don't have to, to look at him in his uh, coat of many colors that, uh, his, that our, our father has given to him. We won't have to listen to the, the favorite stories anymore. I'm, I'm not sure what went through their mind day after day after day after day and what may have vexed them thinking about Joseph. But now with this reunion, as they come, uh, the brothers come to Egypt, as Jacob has sent them to be able to keep the family going uh, through provisions, you know, that Egypt maybe could possibly provide, please go and see, you know, whatever, that the uh, Lord sent Joseph. And Joseph says that. It was, it was God that sent me. It, it wasn't you. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. Don't beat yourselves up over it. God did this. And surely we're not going to fault God. We can praise God for what he's done. You know, we, a lot of things in, in our lives we tend to fault God about instead of praising him for. And we need to forget his precious promises and not live victorious in those promises. So I'm glad that Joseph had it right. I'm glad that Joseph said, hey, it, it wasn't you that sent me that had all these things happen. It was God, and God took care of things. And God knew what he was doing. God, God is rich in his foreknowledge. You know, we think about tomorrow. I don't know if I have tomorrow. But if I have tomorrow to live, I know that God already knows all about it and what's going to happen from, from the time I... I wake up in the morning to the time I, um, I'm getting ready, getting prepared uh, to go off to work, the uh, time I get there and what I may face uh, uh, through the day, uh, the struggles, the, the strength that I may need, 
Uh, the people I may come across need to be a, an example, a witness, uh, a, a, a spokesperson, an ambassador to. God knows all about it. He already knows, and he's already preparing things for that. Uh, God does prepare us for the things of tomorrow. Maybe even right now you're thinking of some things that we've, we've looked over. You're thinking of things that you saw in the Word of God, even those few verses, and God's already preparing you. Uh, for some things of the, of the future. And so let's, let's take God at his word and let's take him for his promises that he has given. God blessed Jacob with some 147 years. That's a good long time. And God blessed Joseph for 110 years. I, I had at first in my notes, God blessed Jacob with 140. That's how long he, he lived. But he blessed him for, you know, what a thought. God's blessed me with, uh, with 61 years. You know, maybe that's, I'm halfway through. I don't know, probably not. But he's blessed me with, but you know what? He's blessed me for 61 years. Wow, that to me uh, is amazing. And uh, we know that uh, the people that uh, we read about them in the, in the Old Testament, especially that we call them the, the children of God, his, his children, we think about Israel, uh, they, they spent, when they got to Egypt, uh, they would wind up staying there. We know that there would be a time when a Pharaoh didn't know God, did not have the same appreciation. He didn't know Joseph. He didn't know the God of Joseph. And so uh, things changed, and uh, it looked like, wow, these, these Israelites, there's so many more uh, Israelites uh, it seems to be that, uh, you know, they, they could overpower us. They could overtake us, and we need to do something. Put them in servitude and made them serve. But, you know, even through that, even through all their struggles and their service to the Egyptians, God was taking care of them. God was providing for them. I don't think there was a day that they went hungry because I, I feel like the Egyptians said, hey, if I don't feed you, you're not going to you're not gonna going to pass out on me, whatever else, so I need to keep you fit. God provided day in and day out, and uh, none of us like to go through struggles, go through adversities, but will you, will you trust me that God is still providing, and God does have uh, precious promises. Did God forget them? Did he forget the promises to make of them a great nation? What's the answer? One person says no. Yeah. No, God did not forget his promises whatsoever. And God has promises in his precious word, and he has not uh, forgotten. So let's look today, look at the promises of God's uh, son, the promises of God's son. Look, look with me at the book of Acts, Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. You know, we cannot go through and name every single promise in here. We don't have the time for that. Uh, we probably cannot think of a, just a vast majority of promises, but God has promised us things, and he is, uh, 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 he's good on his word, and he will take care of things. Acts 13, let's start with uh, verse 17 and following a few, few verses here. Uh, Acts, 7, uh, Acts 13, excuse me, Acts 13 and verse 17. The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt. And with an high arm brought he them out of it. And about the time of 40 years suffered he their manners in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he divided their land to them by lot. And after that, he gave unto them judges about the space of 450 years until Samuel the prophet. And afterward, they desired a king. And God gave unto them Saul, the son of Sis, a, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, by the space of 40 years. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart which shall fulfill all my will. So God knew it, and God knew that David would fulfill his work. So was there a problem with God not knowing if David was going to make it or not, if he was going to be uh, you know, subdued 
by King Saul or anything else? Did God not know what was happening, what was going on? God knew all about it, didn't he? And so I, I like this word fulfilled. They were fulfilled in David. David did become the king and the great king of Israel. You know, Saul had that opportunity. You know, I really honed in on opportunity, the word opportunity, because I think each and every day we have opportunities to live for God. And I'm thankful for those opportunities. Sometimes we don't look for those opportunities. And, and sometimes I think we miss out on opportunities as God brings them our way. But uh, he has a way of, of bringing us through many opportunities. And uh, we can definitely uh, be of service to him and for his uh, cause. And so that word uh, fulfill or fulfilled, it's, it's a promise. It's something that has happened. It has taken place because of something that was said previously. And so it was fulfilled. God making promises and God making good on his promises. The, these things were fulfilled in David. And so uh, David could, uh, could run if that's what he felt like he needed to do. He felt like he needed answers from God, all these things. Uh, but uh, God had, to, had this uh, all under control uh, for David. Let's uh, uh, keep on here with uh, Acts 13. Verse 23 and following. Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. When John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John fulfilled his course, he said, Whom think ye that I am? I am not he. But behold, there cometh one after me, whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to loose. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, and whosoever among you feareth God, to you is the word of this salvation sent. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. And though they found no cause of death in him, yet desired they Pilate that he should be slain. And when they had fulfilled all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a sepulcher. But God raised him from the dead. And he was seen many days of them which came up from, uh, with him from Galilee of Jerusalem, who are his witnesses unto the people. And we declare unto you glad tidings, how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God hath fulfilled the same unto us their children. And that he hath raised up Jesus again, as it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And as concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption, he said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Wherefore he saith also in another psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid into his fathers and saw corruption. But he whom God raised again saw no corruption. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things, which, from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses." Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you, which is spoken of in the prophets. Behold, ye despisers, and wander and perish. For I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Jesus said some mighty words, some mighty loving words. He had some strong words because... Of the Jews that did not trust God, they, they had their traditions and they had what the prophets had written down and was passed along by a word of the prophets from God. And they had these promises and had these things that, that Jesus would be born, the, the Messiah, the, the anointed one of Israel would be born and he would come to save his people. Even the very name Jesus is salvation. Jesus came to save people from their sins. And so there's many people that do not believe the promises of God. 
Uh, there's many people that, uh, uh, you know, don't even believe that, that the, the Messiah, the real Messiah, has come. And then there's people that, uh, besides uh, many of the Jews, uh, that don't believe that Jesus is even coming. Uh, to, to save them uh, from their sins. They're, they don't want to have anything to do with a Savior or God or God's Word uh, in these things. And we can trust Him and believe His precious promises. And so the word fulfilled, many, many things were fulfilled in the Word of God. And God uh, gave promises to David. David had these precious promises, and he, he could uh, definitely live in those uh, promises. Let's turn to uh, Matthew uh, chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. If you're familiar with the, the Christmas uh, story, and this is really fitting, I believe, at this time, um, uh, with the precious promises of God uh, fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 1, and we'll, we'll look through um, several verses, uh, maybe just like one or two at a time. Let's start uh, Matthew 1, starting in verse uh, 18. Let's see if we get the right uh, one here. Matthew 1, verse 18, and following these few verses, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. And so we have that in Jesus Christ, God with us. God did come to be born of a virgin. Uh, there was no uh, bad seed. There was no sinfulness, anything passed along to Jesus Christ. He, was, he is our, our sinless sacrifice, the spotless Lamb of God. And so even as it was prophesied, Jesus was fulfilled in the virgin birth. I'm so glad of that. There's no trouble with me trying to accept that somebody that had sin is trying to save me. Jesus was and is forever will be sinless. No sin whatsoever. Our, our thing with sinless is I, I try to sin less and less. I ask the Lord more and more these days, help me be sinless. Help me not to, to fall into the, the wiles and the traps and the tricks of the devil and everything that he has for me because I want to honor and glorify God. And so these things were promised and they were fulfilled in Jesus Christ. All right, let's uh, hear a few more verses here. Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 and following. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. And so we have more prophecy fulfilled. Promises fulfilled. Promises that came true. Look uh, at verse 15. And was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Look at verse 17. 
Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted because they are not. The prophecy fulfilled. Verse 23, And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. Jesus fulfilled these prophecies, and many prophecies were fulfilled in, in him. And um, there were some, uh, some different scholars attribute different uh, promises, some maybe a couple things together. But uh, uh, it said there's somewhere between 300 to 570 promises that Jesus Christ fulfilled. And we've read some of these already, just a handful of these. A mathematician, uh, somebody that's got a lot more uh, thinking and more time than, than I do, uh, has put it like this. The probability of a, of a Messiah, just eight things that the Messiah would have fulfilled uh, at this time is one to, uh, in 10 to the 17th power. In other words, there's one chance in 10 or 17 zeros that eight of them, eight of them would come true, that eight promises, eight prophecies would come true. And for 48 prophecies to be fulfilled in the Messiah, one in 10 to the 157th power. One with 157 zeros behind it to one. Those are big odds. And yet these things were fulfilled in Christ. Christ fulfilled promises and fulfilled prophecies. And I'm so glad that he did. We can trust even just one of his promises, but his word is full of promises. And so I don't know why sometimes we find it hard to trust the Lord, but I know that we do. We can trust him. Uh, he, he has fulfilled so much, and uh, he has precious promises. All right, promises for God's people. Promises for God's people. Let's look very quickly at Matthew chapter 5. Of course, a, a, a familiar uh, passage of, of Scripture. Matthew chapter 5, and let's read the first 12 verses here. Matthew chapter 5. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. These uh, 12 verses here are part of uh, what's been called the Sermon on the Mount as uh, the Lord spoke uh, to uh, the multitudes and spoke to his, his uh, disciples. He speaks to us uh, through these Beatitudes. Maybe you've heard it said before, the be attitudes, the things that should be in our life, uh, fallen hungering and thirsting after righteousness and all these things. Blessed are the poor in spirit. And there's promises there. Uh, for theirs is the king, kingdom of heaven. And all these things, precious promises in the Beatitudes and what Jesus gave in his sermon on the mount. And so glad that we can, we can trust God for these things and these promises. You can be a blessed person. You can truly be a blessed person. Are you poor in spirit? You can be blessed. It's right there. We just, just read that. Uh, do you mourn? We do, right? We do mourn. You can be comforted. That's comforting uh, to know that we can be comforted and be blessed. Uh, do you display not a meekness, or not a weakness rather, but a, a meekness? Uh, then you can be 
blessed. Do you hunger and thirst after righteousness and for the things of God? You can be filled with Jesus' righteousness and be blessed. Now let's close out with uh, Psalm 1, the first psalm. And we know that there's more, more promises, truly more promises throughout the word of God. Psalm 1, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff, which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. That's a message for the righteous and for the unrighteous. I wish that all, any unrighteous person could read that and know that and know the promises of God. That the man is blessed that will stand for righteousness and stand for God and the things of Christ and the cause of Christ. Be an ambassador for Christ. Uh, be someone that's a witness for uh, that Jesus Christ came to, to be born of a virgin, that he came to ultimately to die on the cross of Calvary, to take upon himself our sins because uh, he died faultless. There was found no fault in him because there was no fault in him. And then that he was buried and that he rose again and that he's coming again. And we can stand in that. And we could be a more righteous and more holy people standing in the righteousness that Jesus Christ has robed us with. I'm glad that we don't have to wear those filthy rags of unrighteousness or even our righteousnesses. But we are robed, if you're saved, you're robed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We can stand in that. And we can stand knowing that what God has said, he will do. Each and every day. Think about it. Take it to the bank. Believe that promise that God has for you each and every day. Maybe take some of the promises on a, on a daily basis. Say, dear Lord, I, I, I trust you for your promises. Maybe name some. I, I trust you for those today. And I'm going to try to live for you. I need your help. But I'm going to try to live for you in those, prophets, those promises being fulfilled as you do those things and you take care of those things and do those things in my life, knowing that God is good for his promises. He makes it good. We can, we can trust that. So with that, let's, let's pray and, and let's, uh, let's be victorious today living in the, the promises of God. Heavenly Father, we do thank you so much for your precious promises. We thank you that... Uh, just humanly thinking, mathematically speaking, there's no way that just one person could fulfill so many promises. And yet Jesus Christ fulfilled so many prophecies and promises. And we thank you for that. We thank you that we couldn't do that, but you surely can. And you can uh, make good on all of your promises that you have for us. Anything that can be applied to our, our hearts and our lives as we read through your scripture, that you can give us an understanding and, and we can trust in your promises. So we thank you for these. We thank you that David could trust in your promises as he sought for answers from you. Uh, the answer is ultimately that God is good. He is so good. You are so good to us. And so we thank you for that. Would you help us to live strength to strength, a victorious Christian life in whatever time that you allow us to have uh, here on earth? We thank you for that precious promise of eternal life that only comes through your son, Jesus Christ. And so please help us to be victorious, even thinking about that today. Please help us with the message to come. I pray for lost souls to be saved today. I pray for us uh, as Christians to be challenged and strengthened and encouraged with what you have today. Please give safety for those 
that continue to make their way to be with us in fellowship today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.